वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम जारा छापी वाला फ्रॉम विरासत हिंद फाउंडेशन अंडर द पेपर आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ इंडिया वी आर टूडे गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वाकता का आर्किटेक्चर दिस मॉड्यूल एम्स टू स्टडी द ओरिजिन एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ रॉकट आर्किटेक्चर इन डेक्किन द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वाकटाकस टू द सेम हिस्ट्री ऑफ अजंता एंड फीचर्स ऑफ द अजंता स्कूल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर एंड पेंटिंग इन द थर्ड सेंचुरी डेक्किन सातवाना पावर वॉज ऑन अ डिक्लाइन एंड इन द नॉर्थ इट वॉज द गुप्तर्स हु रिप्लेस द क्वेश्चन आर रूल्ड एंड एस्टैब्लिश अ स्मॉल किंगडम इन द रीजन ऑफ मॉडर्न बिहार However during the rule of Kushna and the Satavahana large part of the Indian subcontinent went through a rapid transformation this was all thanks to the intermingling of ideas from the west and central asia to southeast asia china europe uh, mainly greece and rome this due to the extensive trade done both overland and on sea Uh, through the silk route both the dynasties patronized buddhist institutions and as a result buddhism spread to china and other ancient countries the point to note down here is that both the dynasties were not buddhist they were predominantly shaiva hindus the satavahanas made generous donations to buddhist monasteries and a number of buddhist monastic sites emerged in the deccan region during this period Several rocket caves appeared in the Deccan, including Baja, Betse, Karli, Junnar, Pitadkhora, Kanheri, and Ajanta. The caves were profusely decorated with carvings of Dwarapalas, Gajalakshmi, Salabanjikas, and royal processions, just like any other temple wall would have been. Pillars decorated with lotus capitals, crowned with sphinx-like mystic animals. In fact, you can see many pillars that. look like the old greek pillars the ionic or the doric pillars of the greek classical architecture even there were panels portraying important events in buddha's life uh, painted uh, in the buddhist caves from the jataka stories the only surviving examples are found in ajanta vakatakas were successors of the satavahanas in the deccan from the mid 3rd century ce they were contemporary of the guptas in the north india it is believed that they have migrated from the amravati region that is the present day andhra pradesh to the deccan now who exactly founded the vakataka dynasty and why they did migrate if they ever did is not much known the vakatakas were brahmins and from what we can collect recollect from inscriptions was founded by king vindhya shakti in 250 ce the dynasty expanded during the reign uh, reign of vindhya shakti's son pravarasena 1 and further divided into four branches after his death among the known branches it was the vatsagunma founded by sarvasena that contributed significantly towards art and architecture of the deccan especially the ajanta caves their capital was at washim in maharashtra harisena the last vakataka king uh, who ruled between 475 to 500 ce was the patron of ajantas artistic movement and inscription found at ajanta states that harisena conquered avanti Uh, which is the present day malwa kosala the present day chatisgarh kalinga present day odisha and andhra in the east and lata central gujarat in the north remains of the temples built during the period of the vakataka dynasty have been found at various places like mandal ramtek ponar and nagra in maharashtra the temple remains especially at mandal between 300 and 600 ce represent the earliest examples of vakataka architecture these shrines mark the transitional period that marks the use of stone earlier there were brick temples the building of stone temples is found mostly in mandal a common feature in all the mandal temples is that they rest on a platform with simple moldings and there are two distinct kind of superstructures a garbhagriha and a mandap sometimes preceded by a flight of stairs and a shrine with steps 
from the lateral sides accompanied by an ablution tank. The Ramtek Kevala Narsimha temple inscription is an epigraphic record of the Vakataka dynasty. This temple is dedicated to Narsimha avatar of Vishnu that is the lion man. The inscription dates to 5th century CE and is presently built into the interior wall of the temple. This inscription talks about the timeline of the Vakataka dynasty. The Vakataka dynasty, as we told earlier, divided itself into four branches. We will talk about the, br the branch that we know about and are responsible mainly for the art and architecture of the region. One of the pictures shown here is the Narsimha that is depicted at the Narsimha temple in Ramtek. One of the pictures here is the Shiva from Mansar. Mansar was the capital of Pravarasena. And it is our site where one can see the beauty of brick architecture of the Vakataka period, the entire fort and its remains of various temples, pillars and pilasters, as well as uh, um, of many uh, structures that talk about Vedic religion being very important, Vedic Hinduism and the performance of yagyas. It is believed that Pravarasena Perform, performed most of the yagyas mentioned in the Vedic text. During this time, this is the deity that they worship too. Alternatively, it, it has confused iconographers through ages because it does not look like Shiva. It looks like a Gana, but then it does not again look like a Gana. It could be some other mythical beast. But from all the findings, until they cannot establish its alternative uh, identity, it is taken as Shiva, who was worshipped primarily by the Vakatakas. This was found at Mansar, which is near um, Nagpur in Maharashtra. And Today it is installed in the National Museum in Delhi. Installed in National Museum in Delhi are also a stack of bronzes that belong to this period. Uh, Queen uh, Prabhavati Gupta, of, uh, she was a princess of Chandragupta. Uh, Gupta dynasty, daughter of Chandragupta II, married to the Kvakataka prince Rudrasena II. When she married him, he died young, uh, leaving her as a regent queen who ruled over for a small period, not much, uh, 13 years. But during this 13 years, the region saw a lot of influence of the Gupta dynasty in their art and architecture, the bronzes being one of them. The uh, the, this stack of bronzes that is now present at the National Museum was, uh, uh, was found by a Gujar farmer while he was plowing his field in Pofnar, which is presently in Madhya Pradesh. And that is why they are called the Fofnar bronzes. Now, why the Fofnar bronze, bronzes are very important is they represent a change in the iconography that is seen in the Buddha bronzes. If you notice here, this uh, Buddha who is standing on a uh, circular platform is wearing his robes that fall on a single so shoulder. They do not cover his both the so shoulders, which was earlier seen. So this transition is seen here in the Fufnar bronzes. The Sangati, the monastic robes are called the Sangati. And this a uh, way of drapery is called the Ubaya Nasika Sangati. That is the Sangati that covers a single shoulder. If you notice very beautifully, the folds are depicted of in metal. We are talking about metal. Uh, the folds of the Sangati as well as the mudras as well as the expression 
this this was something that was seen very beautifully in the gupta period art expressions and the grace that is same seen here in these bronzes and uh, which are now uh, housed in the national museum in delhi so that small period was artistically very productive the period of queen prabhavati gupta uh, during the lifetime of buddha king bimbisara became one of his greatest devotees once in his royal court at rajagriha bimbisara greeted the buddha and his sangha members and invited them for dinner during that time the king thought where may i find a place for the blessed one to live in not too far from the village not too near suitable for going coming easily accessible to people not too crowded during the day and little sound by the night sequestered hidden well fitted for a retired life he then thought of veluvana his pleasure garden which is not which fitted the bill completely so veluvana became one of the first monasteries in the buddhist world here the buddha delivered a sermon in which he outlined a code of conduct for the monks centuries passed the sangha tradition grew in leaps and bounds across the subcontinent in the early centuries of the christian era merchants and traders along uh, with kings and ministers actively participated in donating money for the constructing of dwellings for the buddhist sanghas these dwellings were structurally built of bricks bamboo and many of them were hewn out of rocks they were rock cut caves among those that have survived in terms of artistic merit and uh, technology used the best ones are the rock cut caves of the deccan located all across the sahyadri mountains gautam buddha or siddhartha was born in a royal family at lumbini it is said that his mother mahamaya when pregnant saw a white elephant entering her womb in a dream the royal astrologer interpreted this as a symbolic of her having conceived a son who would either be great or a religious teacher this episode is beautifully narrated in a panel inside the cave too of ajanta once when prince siddhartha was touring his kingdom he saw three examples of suffering an old man with infirmities a sick man and a dead body he was disturbed but on another day he saw a beggar content and at peace with himself he was convinced that he must strive to relieve people from these cycles of suffering and he renounced his kingdom to become a wandering monk buddha gained enlightenment and meditated while meditating under a bodhi tree at gaya in bihar he then taught people how to reduce suffering in their life and had many followers he died at the age of 80 at kapilavastu which is termed in the buddhist world as mahapari nirvana the event when buddha decided that it was time to leave his body Deccan is a land of great natural diversity. The Satavahana dynasty had significantly contributed to the monastic establishments of Buddhism. The thick basalt rock and the serenity of the forest provided an excellent backdrop for large monasteries. Ajanta and Pital Khora were two among the best known early establishments and can be traced to as far back as the 2nd century BCE. Ajanta is nestled in a horse shoe shaped ravine of the Indiyadri hills overlooking the Vaghora river the site is a place of tranquility and contemplation ajanta has a total of 28 caves of which cave 9 10 12 and 13 are of the early phase among these the caves 9 and 10 are chaitya grihas chaitya grihas are buddhist prayer halls and caves 12 and 13 are viharas monasteries that is dwelling area the discovery of ajanta by the british and the way they documented it we will be discussing it in april 1819 captain john smith an officer with madras regiment of british army went on a hunting trip to aurangabad chasing a tiger he found himself 
near the edge of a deep ravine. On the other side was a huge arch of what seemed like a cave. Intrigued, he beckoned his fellow officers to follow him, leading to the discovery of the showpiece Ajanta Caves. It is said that Captain John Smith chanced upon Cave 10, which is known to be the earliest Chaityagriha or the prayer hall in Ajanta, where he marked his discovery with a hunting knife, inscribing his name and date on a mural. Though Ajanta was first discovered in 1819, however, it was not until 1838-39 that the caves gained worldwide prominence. James Ferguson and his fellow British officer James Burgess made the first serious attempt to date and sort out a chronology for the caves. James Ferguson sketched these caves in 1838 and 39 and was chiefly interested in their archi architecture. In 1846, Major Robert Gill, an army officer from Madras Presidency and a painter, was appointed by the Royal Asiatic Society through the offices of James Ferguson to make copies of the frescoes on the cave walls, which were increasingly subject to damage by visitors. Gill worked on his painting at the site from 1844 to 1863, though he continued to be based there until his death and made 27 copies of the large sections of the murals. All but four were destroyed in a fire at the Crystal Palace in London in 1866, where they were on display. Undeterred, he returned to the site and recommenced replicating the murals until his death in 1875. These are some of the most beautiful line drawings created by him that can still are that still exist in the British Library uh, for people to see. Chaityagrihas or the Buddhist Prayer Hall. Chaityagrihas were built for ritual circumambulation by monks around the stupa which symbolizes the Buddha in the Hinayana sect. The uh, Buddhism is divided into two predominant sects, the Mahayana and the Hinayana. The stupa consists of a cylindrical base with a dome on top and is crowned by a square box-like member called harmika. This in turn is surmounted by a triple umbrella made of wood. When Buddha was breathing his last, he called his disciples and instructed them to erect stupas who were over his corporeal remains. Rock-cut stupas, which are copy of the structural ones, also enshrined relics of venerable Buddhist monks. These relics are deposited in a reliquary, a small hole cut in the dome of the stupa. The prayer hall is supported by columns and the path of circumambulation is circular around the stupa. The columns slope inwards, imitating the wooden columns that would have been structurally necessary to keep a roof up. The ceiling is barrel vaulted with wooden ribs set into them. The large horseshoe shaped window, the chatya window, was set above the arched doorway and the whole portico area was carved to imitate a multi-storied building with balconies and windows. Caves 9 and 10 are Ajanta's earliest chatyagrihas. They were established through community efforts and not royal patronage. This is established by the discovery of inscriptions etched on the walls and pillars of Cave 10. So both these caves were painted in the early period. However, what we see now are the remains of the later period, that is the 5th century CE. The only remains that can be traced to the early period are the floral and geometric imprints on the upper levels of the pillars and ceilings. Inside cave 9, a group of men, remains of a long Jataka sequence on a side wall are paintings from the earlier phase. They are noted for their unique headgear similar to the ones at Pital Khora. These are the original line drawings from the Buddhist rocker temples of Ajanta by James Burgess. This is a reproduction and they are still there uh, with the British Library and one can view this online. The Vihara in its earlier, early phase was a square structure or a cave with cells in the side walls. The area was used for dwelling purpose by the Buddhist monks. But 
Buddha had advised his monks not to stay in a place for a long time. They were meant to keep wandering. It was only during the monsoon that they had to stay at one place and hence were provided accommodation in caves, came to be known as Vasavasa, meaning the abode during monsoon. Cave 12 of Ajanta is the best preserved earlier Vihara, a large hall surrounded by cells on all the three sides. The cave is simple in plan and design. Each cell has a Chaitya arch, depiction above its doors and windows. As you can see here in the pictures, the railing pillar below the arches is a typical architectural feature of ancient India. In the later phase, that is after the 1st century CE, Buddhism was on a decline in Ajanta and its surrounding region. It was only in 460 CE that the religion was revived under the patronage of the Vakatakas, especially Emperor Harisena. Harisena was a Shaivite, but his prime minister and all of his known feudatories were Buddhists. It was they who prevailed upon him to support the most ambitious project envisioned in the entire Buddhist world. The entire project was completed in a span of 18 years. According to Professor Walter Spink, an expert on Ajanta, Ajanta's essential development ended within a year of Harisena's death. The work in 478 CE was done in a rush. Cave 7 is the first Mahayana cave in Ajanta. It represents the transition from the Hinayana to the Mahayana phase of Buddhism. The unique feature of this cave is that it has a double portico. It was planned as a grand and lavish cave, but due to problems with the rock, it remained a long porch connected with a modest shrine. The excavators of Cave 7 had not carved a cave before. It is presumed that they depended almost exclusively on the plan of the earlier Hinayana caves at the site. A remarkable similarity in the Chaitya arch designs pillars is noticeable between Caves 7 and Cave 12. The excavation that started in 460 CE gradually advanced in the succeeding years. In 468 CE, most of the caves had been made livable. The significant movement of this year was the transition from plain supas to images of Buddha being engraved on them. This decision was made perhaps by the powerful Buddhist Sangha members. The first caves to depict this transformation were the Chatyagrihas. In the front part of the plain stupa, an image of the Buddha was sculpted, seen in both cave 19 and cave 26, the Mahayana Chatyagrihas at Ajanta. Subsequently, the idea expanded to all the Viharas and the sculptural arrangements turned elaborate, bringing in aspects of Buddha's life. Other Buddhist divinities, semi-divine creatures, religious symbols, animals and plants into its ambit. Caves 19 and 26 are the best known Mahayana Chaitya Grihas of Ajanta. These caves use the typical features of the earlier Hinayana Chaitya Grihas, but are architecturally more splendid. The pillars are robust and of a complex design. The stupas are structurally elaborate and the panels depicting Buddha's life events make both the Chaityas unique, unique in the entire subcontinent. The most significant sculpture is that of Buddha's Mahapari Nirvana in cave 26. As explained earlier, Mahapari Nirvana was the time when Buddha decided to leave his body. He rests peacefully, his disciples mourn and the celestial beings welcome him to heaven. Cave 26 was sponsored by Bhavi Raj, a minister and friend of the king of Ashmaka, the modern day Khandesh region, which falls in Madhya Pradesh. A unique feature of this cave is the presence of three entrances from the Varanda to the main hall. Ajanta is most famous for its paintings. The paintings are perhaps the oldest surviving examples of Indian classical art. In fact, this is where, from where all the schools of Indian painting originated and developed. 
these document the society then depict various members their attires buildings customs and in general their daily life the varieties that are seen in dresses patterns uh, jewelry that they wear their skin tones their various hairstyles furniture uh, and houses even some uh, some such things have been depicted in a stunning way the characters are cast in a plethora of situations ranging from coronations to renunciation to intimate moments to moments of separation from childbirth to the suffering of old age in fact the depiction of embrace is considered the most romantic portrayal of the emotion of love they depict a world that is both real and spiritual at the very same time animals are also seen here the most common being elephants swans deer and horses the bloom of flowers the wilting of creepers the sprouting of leaves are sensitively captured this also shows the kind of importance that our culture gave to the flora and fauna of a particular region the paintings vividly demonstrate the ideals of indian art distinct characterization depiction of various emotions beauty grace compassion all in a variety of colors and shades as explained in chitra sutra the treatise on painting in consonance with the beliefs and codes of the three worlds that is the heavenly divine and the earthly the artist used various shapes and sizes to depict characters uh, like the gandharvas yakshas the rakshasas the artist used a technique where uh, the viewer does not remain outside the painting but feels like they are a part of it all the buddhas and the bodhisattvas these are the murals of cave 2 the beautiful murals of cave 17 now how these murals were done the stone surface of the cave was decorated with two layered plaster made from a fine paste of mud and plant material with a top coat of lime at times rags were mixed into the lime as binding material painting was done when the lime was completely dry this is a technique that is different from the fresco black white yellow green red and blue were the most predominant colors all the colors were made from locally available natural materials except the blue the blue came from lapis lazuli and this lapis lazuli was imported from afghanistan it's a semi precious stone the artists were natives of india and belonged to the school of art whose founders were believed to be yakshas and the nagas who were an art fraternity from kashmir the mahayana caves harisena sponsored cave 1 which is the finest and the most richly carved vihara at ajanta the cave was excavated at the eastern end and today it is the first cave that the vis- visitors enter into according to walter spink it is one of the last caves to be excavated at ajanta it is the only cave with decorative sculptures on its facade it has a porch earlier which seems to have collapsed the harisena cave has some of the best paintings inside the most notable being that of the bodhisattva padmapani and vajrapani even today this painting is the symbol of our country and its art whenever you talk about painting it is this image of bodhisattva padmapani that is flashed the most most both are considered as masterpieces for their poise simplicity composition and the color combination they depict serenity and their eyes hold boundless compassion the paintings of cave 1 laid emphasis on imagery and royalty drawing heavily upon the features of vakataka court the cave 2 a later cave was excavated through the patronage received from a queen 
The cave is supported by robust pillars and is ornamented. It appears very similar to cave 1. At either end of the varanda is a small cell with a pillared porch in front. On the right cell, a Naga king is shown seated with his attendants. On the left cell, Hariti with a child on her lap is shown. According to Buddhist mythology, Panchaka was the king of Gandhara region. Hariti was his wife and a cruel woman who believed to have devoured children, all except hers. She underwent a transformation when Buddha abducted one of her children and turned into a nourisher and protector of children. When she realized what it is to lose a child, she turned into a protector and that is why she is depicted holding a child. The cave is also noteworthy for the painted ceilings of its central hall. It has a circular design with floral and geometrical patterns and the Kinnara couples or the divine couples. The floral design, birds and fruits offer a very pleasing sight. On the side wall there are paintings of countless Buddhas in various attires. Cave 6 is of two floors. The varanda of the lower story has entirely disappeared. On the upper story, the walls of the shrine are carved with a number of seated Buddhas. The cave has only one painting which records a gift by a monk. Uh, the cave 16 of the Mahayana Viharas is one of the largest and is known for its sculptures. The cave 16 was patronized by Varaha Deva, the minister of Harisena. Beautiful couples and batuks, dwarfs on pillars are the best sculptures of the caves. Ornaments like necklaces, rings, bangles, hairstyles give an idea of the elaborate style of grooming that was prevalent in those days. This cave was excavated by the king of Rishika. Khandesh in the memory of his brother. Cave 17 has some of the most magnificent paintings. The paintings are mostly intact and depict stories of human virtue, the left end of the porch. Once had a magnificent bhava chakra depicting human life. Over the door are eight Buddhas, including the Maitreya, the future Buddha, the various incarnations of Lord Buddha, they are supposed to be 18 numbers. The painting of a flying Indra and Apsaras are also noteworthy. The Jatakas are a collection of stories from episodes of the previous births of Buddha. The experiences of previous lives resulted in the Bodhisattva's ultimate transformation into the Buddha. From Siddhartha, he evolved into a bodhisattva that is a thinking buddhist monk and from there he transformed himself into the buddha the enlightened one each jataka contains the story of a bodhisattva who is either depicted as a protagonist or a supporting character most of the paintings of ajanta are based on the stories from this jatakas mahajanaka jataka is best illustrated in cave 1. In cave 2, a panel depicts the bed chamber of Maya who dreamt of a white elephant entering her body, the mother of Gautama Siddhartha who became the Buddha. Cave 17 also depicts the Chaddata Jataka, Vasantara Jataka, Mahagalpi Jataka and the Sutta Sama Jataka. Post 5th century CE, Ajanta did not see any major artistic activity. The first renaissance of Indian art in the subcontinent was lost in time. However, the artists who created these wonders did not lose their tradition. The artisanal groups migrated to various places in India, bringing about new uh, philosophies and depicting various scenes, not just from Buddhist philosophy or the tales, but also from Hinduism as well as Jaina in other regions. They and their descendants carried this tradition even to the 
neighboring countries. For example, the paintings at the Srigriya Caves in Sri Lanka created around the same period show remarkable similarity to the paintings of the Ajanta Caves. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. For more further information, please refer to the e-text that is uploaded on the website.